Welcome back to the run-up. The leadership of Accord in Lagos State endorsed Governor Sanwolu, his deputy, Dr. Obafemi Hamzat, for re-election, and the APC candidates in Saturday's polls. Other political parties included the, well, includes the Young Progressive Party, that's the YPP, the APP, Action Democratic Party, ADP, the Allied People's Movement, the Zenith Labour Party, the New Nigeria People's Party, and People's Redemption Party at an event uh, held in Lagos, that announcement was made. I also understand that seven governorship candidates have also stepped down for the APC governorship candidates of Lagos. And joining us to discuss this is Honorable Dili Oladeji, Lagos State Chairman Accord Party. Hello, you're welcome to the program. Yeah, good morning. We also have Theophilus Akatuba. He is a media consultant and public affairs analyst. Hello, Mr. Akatuba. You're welcome to the run-up. And uh, good to be with you in the period of jostling for the votes. Yes, very interesting period indeed. Yes, but we must appreciate the development we are recording. Definitely. And not forgetting my co-host, Adebayo Olowake. Adebayo, it's good to still have you with us. Yes, my pleasure always. All right, let me start with you, Mr. Dele Oladeji of the Labour Party. Accord. Accord Party, I beg your pardon. Your party has endorsed the governorship candidate of the APC. But also in all your state, you, your party splits already. Uh, some, uh, some members of your parties are going for the APC, some for the PDP, and some are still with the Accord Party, confused, not sure what to do. And in 2017, one of your major stakeholders, Rashidi uh, uh, um, Ladoja, they came from your party and joined another party. That makes me wonder how relevant your joining any other party at this point in time is, and why any other party should be jittery about your alliance with the APC at this point. Okay, um, thank you so much. One thing is uh, every politics is local. So I will speak majorly on Lagos states where I'm the state chairman. But I'll touch a little on Oyo State. The sort of, um, what did I say, difference and then divergent group in Oyo State's accord is actually orchestrated by one of the party leaders there in the person of Dr. Honorable Bukola Jaja. She is the former national secretary. Though she's sitting tight we have been trying to like, let us have a national congress since last year, January, so we can bring in a new set of leadership. But they realize that Teno has expired beyond the constitutional limits. They don't want to go. That's ourselves and the former national chairman, Alaji Nalado Mohammed. So what she's doing in your city is, uh, I don't know, she's not disciplined, and she has been running a one-person show. So what she did actually was like, she went to endorse Shei Makindi. That's your word against her? Yeah, it's, I can, I'm saying it with every clear conscience. She endorsed Shei Makindi, even without the knowledge of her partner in, let me say, electoral crime, Alaji Mohamed Nanadu. So now that's what caused the, um, the conflict. She endorsed Shei Makindi without the knowledge of, the, of her partner, and Alaji Nanadu is now fighting her back. But one thing is, her call as a party still remain, the structure still remain with um, Barista Uyeniji and the leadership in Oyo State is still Mogaji Sunday Igbishola. So the party structure in, in Oyo State still remain. While Aja is like on the fring trading with the party name and Alaji Mohamed Nanado on the fring trading with the party name. Now I won't like to say much on Oyo State because it's out of my own jurisdiction. Now in Lagos State, yes, we have endorsed Governor Shi and Governor. Babajide Sonwolu. And uh, this is our very first time of forming an alliance with APC. APC have been the ruling party in Lagos since 1999 when they were AD, AC, ACN, and APC now. But uh, this very person I refer to in Oyo State, Ajaja, when we were pushing in Lagos, we were very radical in Lagos State. We were pushing for a national congress, which is according to the party constitution and every other thing. She declined. Realized that any national congress will make her exit the seat. So we went to court and we won the case in May. So they look for a way to like jeopardize or sabotage our efforts in Lagos State. So that's why they now bring in 
some imposters to lock down our tickets in Lagos State. So even I can say it with every clear conscience that if you look through the streets of Lagos State, if you see any poster of a court party in Lagos State, they are posters that we pasted in the local government election in 2021. So we have a situation whereby there is a person holding on to our governorship ticket, but he's not campaigning. It's like when a thief, if you steal a trumpet of a king, where will you blow it? So as a party, we went to court, we were trying to like get our legitimate candidates on the list of INEC. Mm. Our party candidate for gubernatorial seats in Lagos City is Pastor Peter Obayuana. Mm. He's a retired deputy controller of prison. And then we have um, Sam Madigun for the Lagos Central Central District and others too. So we went to court, we were slugging down to like get our list, our legitimate candidates on the list. We, it was unsuccessful. Just like they have it in AA and ADC and so. So we can't sit back as a party and allow illegitimate person to go through the electoral system. They might get into office. Now, um, between when your party aligned with the Labour Party before the presidential election and when you started having this, when did your candidateship change? And when did you start having problems with the candidate of the Accord Party? Um, candidates of a party has been on since the very time when candidate list was released last year, September. So we didn't actually align with Labour Party. I think there have been some misconception about that. It wasn't the what news. We did, yes, what we did actually is we adopted Peter Obi. You understand there is alliance one, party two party meeting together. There is a um, coalition whereby you collapse your party into another party. Mm -hmm. We didn't do any of that. We only adopt Peter Obi as our preferred presidential candidate. I'm going to the state election because one thing is, every politics is local. How do you adopt a party candidate and not adopt the party? Reason is, um, we have someone holding on to our presidential ticket that is not, I can say he's a stranger to the party's structure. Even though he lives in Lagos, he grew up in Lagos, he has no dealing with the party structure in Lagos. It's just like... The Accord show. Party in Lagos is in crisis, just as you are in Oyo State. Adebaye, want to come in here? Yes, Maureen. Um, I've, been, I've been listening to Honorable Oladejo uh, quite uh, with rapt attention. And I, I wish to commend his grasp of um, things around, the, around him in Lagos and then, of course, the region. Uh, sorry, uh, uh, close to Lagos, which is on your state. Yeah. But I'm of the view, uh, based on what he has said, that a court party has been in crisis everywhere. And it's like, in order to avoid uh, not becoming relevant anymore, they decided to align with His Excellency uh, Governor Somolu, who obviously, as the incumbent, will be classified as a front runner. Okay, so how would they respond to that? That it is in order to remain relevant that they have adopted the governor. So they they are not in any case doing the governor any good because I don't see an electoral value. But maybe I'm wrong. So he can clarify this. Mm -hmm. Is it because they're in crisis and they want relevance or what? Okay, thank you so much. Um, one thing is we are actually not in crisis. By the peculiar nature of politics, there will always be some people trying to like manipulate the system and take advantage of things. If you are not really You advanced. are in crisis. That's, okay. It's obvious. <laughs> from all that you've said and from all that's playing out, you are in crisis. Does the Accord Party still exist yes, as a party? Yes, it does. It. The structure is still solid, and we are just one united front. What These is people, the future of this party? Even today, we are very relevant and we are very valid. We are very active. These people are referring to our external bodies. You Your understand? party is adopting all the APC candidates. Is exactly. it across Lagos or across the country? No, it's across Lagos. And why we do that to answer the question, the question of uh, Mr. Oloke, mm, is this, um, we are not doing this to like, retain relevancy. We are still very relevant. We are still very active. But the risk of keeping quiet, like this thing I'm saying on TV now, has been, is not in the public. Because we are not known to like be causing wahala fighting and then causing fracas. We don't do that. We just went to the court straight. Now, the risk of allowing illegitimate people to go through the poll and get into public office, it's a disservice to the public. So our endorsement of Babajide Songulu is not for relevance. We are very relevant. We are very active. We are doing this not to make the error of keeping quiet while people with lack of integrity, get into public office. 
So we look around and look for candidates who can who are very who are synonymous with our party ideology, with our value system. And we look around the three major parties on the ballot and realize Governor Baji Sonwulu is the ideal candidate. And he has shown capacity for that. Mr. Katuba. Yes. How are you processing all that's playing out? Um, well, in, are you talk, uh, talking in respect of the endorsements? In respect of their endorsements and their alliances. Yes, I, I do not. Alliances are not being formed. What we see here is endorsement. When a political party uh, that is in an election began to assess his uh, fortunes in an election and find out that he's not likely to get the vote to win the election, uh, might take the, the option of endorsing the candidate that, in their opinion, is most likely to win or is best suited to win to ensure that uh, those they consider not good enough will not snatch the victory. Uh, so it is uh, well, alliances are deeper and broader and involve all manners of agreement where different political parties set aside their differences and then come together uh, in order to win more votes to form a government. But endorsement is necessarily not an alliance. It's actually uh, a one party looking at the circumstances. Because if you look at all the parties that have endorsed the governor, uh, they, are, they are on their own, not likely to make any significant impact in this election. Mm. But they have numbers of votes, pockets of supporters, that if added together to the vote of the candidate or the party they have endorsed, victory is surer in order to prevent others they think uh, will not do well. Because if you look at what they said, they said that uh, they were informed by the outstanding performance of the current government and that they would not want to take chances so that all the developmental projects will be scuttled by the fact that, that uh, the opposition or the most likely opposing candidates will be powered into power by sentiment. And so they are putting forces together to prevent that. So I, I think it's a positive development for the APC because the APC is confronting an election in which the reasoning is not the subject. The electorate that where that the, the set of electorate that they are confronted at the moment, they are like a mob without reasoning. Uh, they are only trying to do damage, not really about development. They are trying to retaliate for a hurt of the past. Uh, they are trying to so the previous election in the presidential, some are going to vote against the APC because they consider or thought or think that the election was rigged in favor of the APC, the party they thought or they believe should not have won the election in their own calculation. Okay, and so that's you... why I think that uh, the parties have decided to to forestall or to to slow that that uh, mob movement. That movement. <laughs> you say it's a positive development for the APC. But is it a positive development for democracy? Well, it is a positive development. It means that parties can work together when the, when the push comes to shove, when things get tougher. Uh, from what you see, there could even be higher levels of engagement in terms of proper alliances. And there are many, very many ways this can be done. But for now, this is a positive development. It means that all these other parties can sit on the table in the future with the APC and demand good government and also even demand some, some levels of involvement in the future government. So but when, when, when parties align, I mean, we're, we're talking about horse trading here. When they align, do they align because they care for the people, they care for development, they care for integrity, or they are just looking for well, positions in, 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 and in how to place their candidates and uh, members in key positions. You're going to also answer that, but let Mr. Katuba take that first. Yes. First, it is in the overriding interest. First, it's about the interest of the party. First, the reason is 
the party need to survive beyond the election. And by endorsing a most likely candidate that they win, you secure opportunity for your party. Then, ultimate, ultimately, is for the benefit of the people. If the party they so endorse is a performing party, the candidate is a performer, and ultimately he delivers the good of the dividends of democracy, it means that their, their initially selfish agenda have turned out good for the people. But in many climes, it's, it's for the good of the people that motivates them, because they want to make sure that the good, the best candidate wins. If you read what they have said here, they are saying that we reach the decision consequence upon our thorough analysis of all the good works and rapid development. Anyone who lives in Lagos, you can point to a few things that are visible, that are very iconic, that are going on. And therefore, these parties are saying they want to sustain that. So they want to sustain that. that respect, why, why, if they were that convinced, one good would wonder. Of, the, the citizens. Yeah, Mr. Katuba, if they were that convinced, one would wonder why they contested in the first place, why they threw up a candidate against this candidate that's been doing so well. Please answer the question I asked him that I said you're going okay. to respond okay. to. Okay. Are you with me still? You no, said no, I, I've, I've gone to the comrade. Okay. Then. Okay. Right. Um, thanks for to Mr. Aka Dubba, right? Yes. Actually, when we are sitting down to decide, we, we are like duty bound as a party. To put forward candidates. Mm. Now, when you get to like, some things come up in your program, what's the place of electoral activities, and some new things come up, you have to sit down, analyze the data and the every other thing. Now, our choosing Governor Bajiri Sonwulu, one thing I want us to realize is, it's through a thought process. It wasn't the only person we thought we, we like consider at least I reach out. As a party, we reach out to Labour Party. We talk for the space of like one week. And what we see with them, they are not All right, bad. You're gonna, I'm going to stop you there because okay. I will not allow you to talk down on another party no, I'm not talking in down favor on of them. another party. No, but no. Let, let me confirm if uh, Comrade Mandos Yusuf of Kaduna State has been able to join us. Hello, Comrade Yusuf. Okay, in the course of the program, we may be joined by Comrade Mandos Yusuf, uh, APC Cardinal State. Uh, but at this point, uh, Adebayo, do you want to? Yes, please. Um, a very interesting expose by Mr. Katuba. Uh, so I have two questions one for Com uh, Honorable Oladiji, and uh, the other one for Mr. Katuba. First, Honorable Oladiji, there are those who might wonder if your political party should still exist. Because from everything you have told us, um, anyone who follows or has followed, you know, the very clear explanation you have given, and you're arriving at endorsing uh, His Excellency Governor Sonwolu, they may be wondering why your political party should still be existing. What would you say to them? And after you have, like Kormi Dakatuba, who said, it looks like there's a, a revenge voting I would like him to clarify on that because every voter has a choice to make. For whatever reason, they are making that choice. So maybe it would be good if Mr. Katuba would also clarify what he meant by that. But Oladiji, can you tell us whether your party should still exist? Yes, our party is, exist, is existing and we still continue to exist. Because one thing is um, that we adopt, we endorse government, so it doesn't mean the party is going to a extinction will still exist even beyond the election. Even as at now, we are still making plans beyond the election. Post-election plans are on ground, so we will still continue to exist. All right, Mr. Akatuba. Yes, I'm with you. Uh, Adeba, you had asked I, a question. Yes, I, yeah, exactly. I, you, you had said that it would appear that this party yes. endorsed His Excellency the Governor because it is assumed that the, the, those who voted in the last election against APC in Lagos appear to have been voting due to a vendetta. It would be nice for you to clarify exactly what you meant. Yeah. From the analysis uh, that was conducted, because it was a it was a surprise, and when they looked at the data, the voting you know population and pattern, they saw that there is this NSAS movement, NSAS youth that feel aggrieved that the answers uh, uh, matter was poorly managed and that 
uh, uh, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, the flag bearer of the party at the national level, and uh, is suspected to be behind the entire matter. And then that the governor ordered the military to crack down and uh, disperse the youths at the toll gate. They have not forgiven the governor, and so such people are in the fray. Others feel that why should the, the APC present uh, a Muslim Muslim ticket? And a lot of uh, South people voted in reaction to that poor choice in their calculation. So there are these two set of people, apart from the other set that believe that the APC has been holding office for too long. You also hear another set saying that there are miscreants and urchins and area boys on the street terrorizing them in the market. And so, so you can see that all of this is, the choices are like retaliatory in order to pay back for the use that one, each of these voters have suffered in the past. Others are making their choices purely on their own perceived, or perceived, or, or their own observation of a candidate as someone that is competent. And that's a very small number of the opposing votes. So this is the, the analysis. But in the governorship election, a lot of the NSAS youth are still jostling to pay back. And then you still have the majority of the voters of the Labour Party who, who, in their opinion, are angry that they were shortchanged. They are thinking that they, their mandate was not given to them, that they had won the election. Such are still waiting to repeat that protest vote by voting. It's not as if they do not feel some development and good governance in Lagos. But they want to just make a statement that we are still in the numbers. So this is why you see this endorsement is an, it's a big boost. It weakens those who believe that the APC is finished. When they read and they see other parties making public declaration like this, it continues to weak the resolve, to weaken the resolve of those who want to vote against them and might even annoy them not to come to the polls. And so they are looking for these opportunities. But Mr. To show Akatuba, that's an interesting analysis you've given. But I, I'm wondering at the weight of these parties, how strong are these parties that have endorsed the APC? In the, in, in, well, how strong are they in, enough yeah, to not, intimidate they not, others? They are, yeah, they are not individually very strong. But take note, the, S, the SDP has made some good error. When I saw the SDP there, the SDP candidate seems to have won some liking. In the current elections, you find that the votes count, and every vote is important. How many votes? It took about 9,000 votes for the Labour Party to defeat the, uh, the APC in the presidential election. If you look at it again, if that number, if this endorsement, this endorsement might bring 20,000 votes, because the votes now do count. And therefore, the SDP, the YPP, the Accord, they have pocket members and supporters and family members. So when you multiply that, it can become something. And therefore, they can outdo the, their fiercest opposition. So this, it, 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 there's no single vote that is not important in this critical and highly contested election. Indeed, every single vote counts. But we're going to take a break right now and we'll come back to continue this discussion. I've had with me Mr. Theophilus Akatuba, media consultant, public affairs analyst. I also have Honorable Delia Oladiji, uh, the Lagos State Chairman of the Accord Party. Uh, these are some of the guests I have. We're expecting someone from uh, Kaduna State, Comrade Mandos Yusuf, who is uh, an APC member in Kaduna State, to join us in the course of this program. I also have Mr. Adebay Oloweke, my virtual co-host, with me. We'll take a break. We'll be right back. Stay with us. And it's the run-up. Welcome back to you. We just came back after a very interesting time out. Um, I have as my guest, Comrade Dele Oladeji. 
Is it Honorable Akamori? Actually, Honorable. Honorable <laughs> Dili Oladeji. He is the Lagos Chairman of the Accord Party. We also have Mr. Theophilos Okatuba, Media Consultant and Public Affairs Analyst, and my co host Adebayo. Hello, okay. Welcome back to you. Before we went on that break, I was asking Mr. Akatuba the strength of these parties, nine of them that supported, aligned with the APC and its candidate. How weighty are they? Enough to scare others? Are they weighty enough to scare others? Let me throw that to you. Okay. Um, talking about party strength, well, You've mentioned it now that some nine parties endorsed or aligned with Babajide Sonwulu mm. are called two different from that line parties. That tells a lot about our individual strengths as parties. Some parties gather together and form like a front, and then nine of them endorse Babajide Sonwulu. Mm -hmm. Are called on our own volition. We stand apart and we stand differently, distinctly, and endorse Babajide Sonwulu. It tells a lot about that we are not something of like a crowd movement or a crowd mindset. I want to talk about strength in, in legal state, Accord has been the third party in every election. So we have our weight, the ruling party and the other party, PDP, they know who Accord is and they know what Accord is capable and they know what our strength is like. So we are not just a fringe party, we are strong and then we are solid in legal states. So we have our strength and that's the strength we are bringing to bear on the state governorship election. And remember that our endorsement of Peter Obi make all our efforts to be amassed for Peter Obi in the presidential election. Now we've pulled that out and we're giving it to Governor Bajiri Sonwulu. So that will bring a lot of difference from what was obtained at the presidential election and what will, will be obtainable in the governorship election. You're very confident. Very, very. Why do you not have any candidate for the State House of Assembly elections? Okay. In the truth sense of it is we have candidates for all the state assembly. But referring to what I mentioned earlier, we have a compromised former national executive that wants to like sabotage us in Lagos, knowing that we have been the only radical arm in Nigeria and other states too. So they look to like checkmate us and then drag us down. So that's why we went to court and that's why they okay, you think you can go to court. They now took the tickets off us because actually tickets are only submitted by the national body. So the bring up some candidates that work against us and then they used to like Do you have us. candidates for We this have. Thing? I've mentioned even in the endorsement, when we were endorsing uh, Governor Bajiri Sonwulu yesterday, I mentioned their names. They were there in the How event. many? Across the across local councils? Yes, across the state, um, um, what's the constituents? We have all. But you did say, if I understand correctly, you are endorsing the APC across board. Across board, yes. Meaning that even for the state houses of assembly, yes, across board. APC should be voted. Yes. Not the accord party. Yes. So what happens to the candidates you the say reason, you have? Yes, the reason is our legitimate candidates did not get on the next list. I think it's not peculiar to us. He, he has the same issue. He also gets a declarative judgment that I next should take their candidates, I next didn't. And I think um, ADC have the same issues too. So across the local councils across, in Lagos State, get, we didn't get anyone on the list. It's shocking. And none it's of your bad. candidates came on the INEC list. Legitimate, none of them. Only anybody illegitimate see, ones. Anybody you see are imposters. The division, the crisis in your party is, they is are beyond description. A house divided against itself cannot stand. They are strangers. They are not even accord members. I can say it. Adebayo, you want to come in here? Can I? Can I ask? Yes, please. Honorable Oladej, I was wondering, couldn't your party have suspended these people? These people creating problems for you. Are there no disciplinary measures provided for your constitution to deal with such people? Okay. There are rules and guidelines to dealing with members that are recalcitrant or misbehaving. But one thing is, uh, in Lagos State, I think we suspended like two or three of them last year. But one thing about, about our party is we always love to like not cause rancor or fracas or you can you can't see any news of a court fighting or causing um what was it fracas in the society. So we always go to court. But in Lagos State, we have actually suspended like three of them last year. We expelled one and then suspended two. So that is ongoing. But the issue of this candidacy is that the decision will always be made by the national body, not the state arm. And at the national body, they preferred, as our, our present um, national chairman, in person of Reverend Isaac Adibayo Adeneyi, 
prefer to always like, let's go to court, let God give a verdict, and that will be legitimate than we fighting ourselves. Because if we expel someone now, they can still go to press and say, he remain a party member. That was happening in your state now. One endorsed a person, and the other came out and said, you didn't tell her everything. So most times we just allow the court to give a verdict, and the verdict of the court will be standing. Like all these imposters now, we have a petition against them at the DSS office. They are being handled, but you, you, have, you, have, you will never see us fight them. You will never see us cause rank or any other. No. We petition to the DSS, and DSS is already investigating them, and they are handling the case. It does look like you need to do a total overhaul in your accord party. See, I want to let something be clear. The party is still intact. These people are from outside. Like, the person who is a governorship candidate and ticket is Akim Dixon. Mm. He's known from the, he's from the APC. He, joined, he came into accord, I think, around April last year. The first person he came to is my person. We had a meeting, we gave him our rules and our guidelines, and then he went out and then came from the back door. Because he knew with what I lay on the table, he wouldn't scale through because we have procedures. He, even normally, legitimately, constitutionally, is not eligible to contest any election in Nigeria. His news are on the, in the public domain. I even have a copy, I have it on my email, a copy of his, what is it, his conviction, criminal conviction in the, new, in the um, district court of New Jersey. So with all these in the hand of the party, we are not just looking to sell our tickets to just anybody. So realizing our body language that these people, no, they won't scale me through. He went through the back door and then, so when I say they are from outside, I'm saying it with every sense of conviction. They are not a court member. Imamole wasn't a court member. Dixon isn't a court member. So that was it. The party is still intact. We are still same. We are solid. These people that came to lock down our tickets are from outside. All right. Uh, let's uh, hold it there. We'll take a break. We'll be back to continue with the program. Stay with us. Thank you for your time. Welcome back to the run-up on Plus TV Africa. We continue with our discussions, as I, I told you earlier before we went on break. We have Honorable Dele Oladeji. He is the Lagos State Chairman of the Accord Party. We also have Mr. Theophilus Akatuba, Media Consultant and Public Affairs Analyst, as our guest. And also we have my virtual co-host, Adebayo Lowoke. Hello, gentlemen. Hello, Hello. gentlemen. Good to be back. All right. So INEC has completed the BVAS reconfigurations <laughs> and has begun deployment of the Independent National Electoral uh, Commission's uh, materials. Well, we want to take a look at this and uh, three days to the governorship elections. How comfortable are you, especially when we had on Tuesday, uh, as revealed to us by the Minister of Communication and Digital Economy, Isa Pantami, that INEC recorded more than 12 million cyber attacks on the 25th of February during the presidential elections. Does that bother you? Um, actually, it's very well meaning, well meaning Nigeria. It gives them um, some sense of concern. But I believe since INEC weathered through it, without us recording any negative effects to our electoral process. Well, we are still very confident in the process I have on ground. So we look forward to the election with high hope. Okay, Mr. Katuba. Yes. How, how, do you, how do you see this revelation that INEC recorded 12 million, more than 12 million cyber attacks? I, I, I'm not surprised, but I'm surprised at the number that uh, the server and the INS systems will be attempted by hackers should not surprise anyone. You know, elections are very important, very critical. It goes to the core of the health of a nation. If criminals take power, the nation is gone. And that's why many nations in the world have continually avoided electronic systems of voting. You know, in the U.S., ballot papers are still physical. They are mailed in, they are presented, and they are counted with digital machines. But the end is that there is a ballot paper. 
And so because of what the internet, the, the online, the, the risk, so I'm, I'm shocked at the number of times. But that attempt was made. That was why on the day of the election, while I was at the polling unit, and the presidential results were not going, I, I, I smiled to myself that they would have seen some very magnificent threats and they've decided to slow down. Otherwise, the entire election could be stolen. It would have been more catastrophic than the fact that uh, the, the procedure of uploading real time was not you know, done at that time. Uh, for me, I am very shocked at the numbers. Very, very shocked. Adebayo. Um, Mr. Katuba, I, I, I share your sentiments, you know, in terms of the sheer size of the attempt. But some people might wonder why it's the Minister of uh, um, uh, Communications that is making the announcement, and why not INEC? Because INEC is independent, as it were, and INEC has its own ICT department, it, it has its own head of the ICT, uh, some people might wonder why is the minister who has to come out and not INEC itself saying so. Do you think that would be a legitimate question? Well, I believe it's about government managing information. If the INEC that is at this, at this storm is in the middle of the storm that is being accused of, of manipulating and subverting his own process, is the one giving this excuse. Naturally, people will say, rubbish, you are lying. We don't believe you. And so maybe they gave it in the mouth of a most credible organization that manages all of these systems there so that it has a weight of credibility. That is what I think. If this is, except it is not true, it's made up. But if it, even if it's made up, <laughs> will they make up 12 million attempts? <laughs> I really find it amazing. However, Pantami is telling us, maybe because he has the technical wherewithal to know the exact number of attempts. The INEC might not have the, the technical wherewithal. They might not know the, the depth, the extent. They might know that there is an attempt. But who can give us the full detail? Pantami can give you a phone call that took place while someone, maybe an organization that does phone tel telephony, might not know the length of time a communication took place. So maybe because of the technical will we have to be able to give that information. And that was, I'm sure, he gave that information in passing in another event so that we don't fixate ourselves on the fact that it was, it was hacking that caused it so that the confidence that we are building on the electoral system might be completely lost. All those who are attempting will change tactics. I think there's a lot. It's, this is a very huge security matter. And I, I do a lot of research and reading, both local and international. You remember, even in the US, Russia was accused of interfering. There's, because the cyberspace is open, both good people and bad people operate there. All right, before we go, your final word. Okay. Uh, yes, well. my, my final word is that. An election is coming up on the 18th. Take note that our election is still a manual process. All the technology that has been brought to embellish it and build confidences are not the election. Therefore, political parties get qualified, reliable agents for the elections are won and lost at the polling units. Thank you. That's very strong. Polling agents. We discussed that here. The polling agents are very, very important and must be uh, loyal party members. Yes. Your final words before we go. Okay. Our final word is, uh, as we look forward to the forthcoming election on the 18th of March, I admonish all Lagosians, everybody with their PVC, should go out and vote. We had 7 million registered voters in Lagos State and the turnout in the last election was like a million plus. We are looking at having like 6 million voters this time. Let's come out, let's show our inputs in this electoral process. So go out, vote, and vote our, re-elect our serving governor, Babajide Sonwolu. Thank you. Honorable Dele Oladeji, a court party Lagos State Chairman, has been one of our guests. Thank you for being here Thank and sharing me. with us all that's happening in your party. We do hope that you're able to resolve it. I'm excited to see young people in the political space. 
So I'm excited to meet you. Comrade, um, we couldn't have Comrade Mandas Yusuf as we had planned to. He was supposed to have joined us from Cardinal State, a member of the APC in Cardinal State. Perhaps we'll have him tomorrow. Uh, Mr. Theophilos Akatuba, media consultant and public affairs analyst, also joined us as a guest. Mr. Akatuba, thank you so much for your time and insight. And uh, thank you too for having me. And my virtual co-host, Adebayo Loake, thank you so much for your time. Always a pleasure, Maureen. I am Maureen Menongwe Thanking you for watching. Goodbye.